Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bionic Uncensored. This is kind of a recap and, uh, I don't know, just impressions on Black Hat 2022, which happened last week in Las Vegas. If you were there, maybe we bumped into each other, had a conversation, but it was just great, really, to see everybody back at Black Hat. You know, long story longer, I went to Black Hat last year during the pandemic. It was very subdued. That show floor was probably not even a quarter of what it was this year. So it was great to see everybody back. And the conversations I thought were great from people just being excited to be there to interact with colleagues, past and present, future potentially. It was a great experience, but just some observations, excuse me, on things I saw. Um, one of the things that I see is, you know, always budget extra time when you're going to Black Hat. A lot of times people are late for meetings because you're going from point A to point B and you don't realize that you're gonna see about 75 different people that you know, that you've worked with over the years to have a conversation, see how you're doing, check on the family, see where you're working. So it always, I always had like, it'll take me 10 minutes to get there. It took me more like 30 to 40 minutes to get there. How many people had these conversations? Raise your hands. Seeing somebody you haven't seen since before the pandemic. It was great to connect, but it made things really complicated just to get anywhere on time. It was a, you know, just a, I guess a matter of a course, but it was pretty cool. Second one was uh, the food lines in the food court outside the expo hall. How many people tried to get lunch on their break from the their booth or break lunch between meetings and they walk out and there's a line 100 people long everybody's like the lines are so long well food for note for next year all you have to do is go back towards the main area of the mandalay bay where the casino is hang a left as you're coming out of the center and there's a set of escalators next to a starbucks there's like four or five restaurants up in that mall area connecting over to the luxor never had a line. I'd always just walk a little bit further and I'd never have a line. And it was kind of funny. There was a huge line, I think, for Mexican food at one of the stands. I walked up all the way to that area, got some food, walked all the way back. And the same people that I talked to the first time were still in that line. So just food for thought. Walk to the area, uh, giving away my secret here, walk to the area in between uh, the Luxor and the Mandalay Bay. Yeah, you have to eat, you have to eat, but you don't have to wait in the line. Just food for thought. Ah, pun intended. Um, how many people have uh, witnessed the booth voyeurs? I like to call them the booth voyeurs, where they come and they stare at your booth just on the periphery of the uh, outline of the booth, reading everything, having a conversation with somebody, pointing at the slides or whatever you have up there in terms of the graphics, and they look interested and they're shaking their heads and smiling. You walk up to them and they say, do you have any questions? And they're like, nope, no questions, walk away. Dude, why did you just spend 10, 15 minutes staring at my booth, but you don't want to learn anything else? Maybe you just don't like to talk to people, but found it really interesting that people would stand there and stare and read everything in the booth, look over people's shoulders in the demo, but when it was their chance to kind of interact and ask questions, they said they were good. Just another observation. This happens all the time, but it's, it's kind of fun and interesting to see that. Um, the topics that I really saw a lot of, and I walked around, talked to a bunch of people, uh, were really around a few areas. It kept coming up. I posted this on my LinkedIn uh, kind of uh, thread the other day was that API security is a huge thing. Threat modeling is still a huge thing. Doing it better, doing it more efficiently based on CI, CD pipelines. Uh, supply chain, still a huge thing. People talking about supply chain risk, not just for the ISVs, but for everybody. Is the software or applications developing susceptible to supply chain risk? And the last one was the term posture. Everyone's asking, what does posture mean? And posture really is, is it good to go? Is it ready? And this can apply to both the cloud world with cloud security posture management or the application world, application security posture management. It's a new concept, but everybody, a lot of people are using this term of posture. It seems like the industry analysts have really grabbed onto it. And it's uh, something that I've never seen at Black Hat before. I've seen a lot of press and a lot of things out there, you know, myself included, thinking about uh, posture of my applications, whether it's the infrastructure or the application architecture. So that was an interesting thing. The parties I thought were great, uh, waited in some really long lines again, and hate lines, but there were some events that you waited in line and they were all out. They didn't do anything last year, companies didn't do anything last year, partners didn't do anything last year. So it felt like the parties were a little bit over the top uh, than even in years prior to the pandemic, just because people wanted to get out there and network. And you know what, the conversations were great. Met a lot of people that I hadn't seen in a while at a lot of these events, had a good time. Um, but yeah, the, I thought the parties were great and they did a great, the companies did a great job. Uh, one of the other things is trying to keep up with people. Yes, we'll hook up that night. Let's go to this party, let's go to that party. And as things happen, it was always kind of funny where you're supposed to meet up with somebody, you say, hey, where are you? We're gonna go meet this you know, company or this event or something like that. And all of a sudden they say, oh, I'm at the other end of the strip. 
and just by the cab lines and everything, it was just impossible to get there. So that again makes me think that Black Hat was really uh, back to normal in terms of uh, uh, just the interaction and just the community nature of it. Um, one of the other things is Prezo's in a booth. Uh, a lot of people come up and say, oh yeah, I'd love to see a demo. And you talk to them about it and they shake their head and you ask them if they have any questions. And then they look at you and go, I don't do anything with code. So why did you sit through a demo? I, I don't understand it. A lot of people come in and I, I think they're there just for the swag. I mean, a lot of cool hats, a lot of cool t-shirts, a lot of cool, cool tchotchkes given out. But you know what? Everybody's time is valuable. If you just want the tchotchke, just let us know. We'll give you the tchotchke, the t-shirt, the hat. Uh, you don't have to sit there and, you know, there's tens of people that want a demo and everybody's waiting up and they say, no, I'm not interested. I don't do anything with that. Wouldn't you have known that in the first 10 seconds? Just an experience that I had a couple times that I thought was uh, really interesting. But other than that, I thought it was a great event. Saw a lot of people I hadn't seen in a while, met some new people that been connecting over LinkedIn or, or social media type aspects. So it was great for that. Looking forward to Black Hat 2023 next year? I know I am. That's Bionic Uncensored. Stay cheeky, application security world.